mean, I try to be a coachable guy, I try to be a teachable guy. Ran into Jonas the other day, he said, Coach, you ought to talk to him about being resilient. I said, okay, resilient. I listened, I went to Webster's, looked it up. You know what it says about being resilient? It means to be great or successful again after something bad happens. To be great or successful again after something bad happens. All right, obviously something bad happened. We're resilient, we'll become great again. All right, we'll become successful again. And it takes practicing with the focus and the attention to detail we've been talking about. So everybody get your mind set for that. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Inside Georgia Football with head coach Mark Richt. I'm Chuck Dowdle, and the dogs going back on the SEC road this week, this time to face those folks in orange, the Tennessee Volunteers in Knoxville. We've got a special show for you today. We've got Thomas Brown, the running back coach, all mic'd up. You're going to hear from one of his pupils, and that, of course, is Sony Michelle. He is our special feature beneath the helmet, as well as we'll have highlights of the dogs taking on the Vols. You'll hear from head coach Mark Richt and all the players in their postgame conversation comments that's straight ahead on inside georgia football with head coach mark rick inside georgia football is presented by georgia's own credit union bank borrow invest and brought to you in part by georgia lottery that winning feeling doesn't come if you don't play play georgia's own jumbo bucks lotto with jackpots starting at a million bucks this segment is brought to you by academy Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. The big question heading into week six, how exactly do you get these guys ready for one of the biggest and loudest environments in the SEC? Well, we're gonna blast some music. We'll probably start today, as a matter of fact, just to get a taste of it. It's really uh, the first game that we think the, the crowd noise will be the way it's gonna be. Well, you can't even hear. I definitely remember that. You can't hear anything. I mean, my teammate could be standing right beside me. I couldn't hear him talking. It doesn't affect me, but if it affects the quarterback, then it will affect me. Well, I mean, you have to approach it, approach the week like a professional does, and really just come in with the right attitude. I just know all the hard work we put in the off season. I mean, we really thinking back to that. We really just don't want it all to go to waste. Well, you don't want two losses because that's kind of wrong. You have to rely on everybody else to lose a game. So we can continue to win out in the East and we can end up where we want to end up and that'll, that'll be good for us. I don't think we gotta say how important it is. It's crucial. They're playing for their season, we're playing for ours. All right, I was talking to the staff today. I, I, I've been thinking about this game. I think it's real simple. No gifts, give them nothing. All right, that's missed assignments, bad technique, whatever. No gifts, we win. When communication becomes a problem during a game, it's easy to turn to running the ball. But these backs need to be ready to carry the load. That's where Coach Thomas Brown comes in. Go! Good, good. Keep that hand down. Don't cheat my drill, keep that hand down. Hey, Keith! Turn your eye. Nothing matters till you catch it. Catch it first. This has been great, man. Uh, obviously back at home, back with the coach that recruited me and Coach Rick and got a great staff to work with. Uh, some pretty good players that, that make me look better than I, than, I, than I really am, you know. So those guys work work their butts off every day and are great kids and, uh, and make it easy to coach. Go! Uh, I'm always ready, coach. Hand down, hand down. Go! Uh, uh, come on. Come on, finish, finish, finish. Uh, uh. Game rep, game rep, game rep. What's up, Q's? Let's go. Uh, his coaching style is, you know, is. It's probably unique just because he's young and um, he, he played here, so he knows what all the bats are going through. So really, we have no excuses and we can't tell him what's going on. And he also knows what's going on in our lives on a daily basis, so it's always great to have him. Stay in there! Stay in there! You know that hole was, uh, was tight there on power? But well, get your pads down. You don't want to be jumping through that stand straight up. 
he's a great coach. And, um, he played here, so he played in the NFL. So he's, um, he knows how to run the ball. And um, his style is just almost the same as um, Coach B Max. Just get the ball, get downhill, and punish the defenders. I, I definitely cut those guys any slack at all. I'm about perfection and trying to be the best you can be. And we have players who can really be great players that they kind of concentrate and work at every single day. But you gotta gotta come out and give it up every day. It's not gonna be given to you. But I, I rely a bunch on my my personal experience because uh, I've been only coaching a couple years, but I, I played for a good amount of time and played that business. I was about eight years old, so I try to add my two cents every now and then. Around this call, attack vertical, get here and then jump cut. I'm gonna cheat my drill. No, nah, maybe maybe cut the gut back a little bit too soon. I thought it was, it was gonna end up hitting back there. I think hit it. Ball! Get the ball! That's all about this job. I can be the best running back coach in America, but if my players aren't good, I'm, I'm going to be a, a bad coach. You know, those guys make me, like I said, look better than what I really am. And I just try to make sure those guys are coached up and, and have confidence in the game plan and go out and execute. It's not much of a difference. You know, they both work hard. You know, they stay on us daily about working, trying to get better every day, making no excuses, and just, you know, trying to be the best we can be. Matt, let's go. Hold on, hop. Let's go. Grab a ball. Around, around, press, jump cut. They go finish. They go good, good. Over exaggerate the press. Go. Yep, outside, outside. Good, good. Keeping those pads down. Well, I don't rush them at all. They go, they go and work every week, but uh, it definitely makes it easier to push those guys harder because you do have some depth. And if guys do get tired, they get dinged up, you have confidence in guys you can roll in there, can execute the game plan. But uh, it definitely makes it easier when you have a couple guys you can rely on. Hit it. Ah, stay up, stay up. Elbows in tight. Thumbs on my nipple so I can punch. Go! Good, good. He gonna try to keep me on purpose. You think it's funny? You think that's funny? I ain't tell you to go yet. Go! Coming up next, Sonny Michelle tells us who he plays for when he's on the field. This segment is brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. 24-13 starting out in rapid succession here in the first half. Throw it to Sony Michelle on the near side. Oh, he slams on the break, makes a move into the end zone. Touchdown, Sony Michelle, and then he stares down the defender. If I could change the world in one way, I feel like football is the closest way I'd be able to change the world. It almost makes me feel like I, I kind of can have a voice. Sony Michel was born to play football. That's what his coaches thought, especially once he began receiving college scholarship offers in eighth grade. That's what his speed, size, and strength indicated. But he didn't love it, at least not yet. It wasn't until high school that Sony realized football was more than a game. It was a door to opportunities. Uh, one was getting my parents a job at the school I played for, because at the time they were unemployed. And um, once they got a job, it kind of made everything seem a little bit more easier for the family, I would say. Uh, everybody seemed happy at the time. I was happy, they was happy. Yet, even with two jobs, Sony's family still struggled. I actually seen them work sometimes, being in school. Uh, my mom worked in a cafeteria, my dad did maintenance, so I seen them around school. You know, it's a little different for a kid to walk around school and you'll be able to see your parents working. And they work from six in the morning to probably six in the afternoon. And um, seeing my dad having to pick up trash and my mom in the back of the kitchen in the heat, having to serve food all day, it was just a little disturbing. While his parents worked from sun up to sundown, Sony began to see college offers flood his mailbox. It was then that he knew, like his coaches had always known, that he was born to play football. Not for himself, not for the glory, but for them. Really, I just play football just to be able to help others. You know, I wanna, there's, there's people who helped me growing up. I wanna be able to help people that not able to help me back. With that in mind, Sony chose Georgia. It was an opportunity he believed would give him a voice, not only during his four years in red and black, but also a voice for his future, for his family. Hand off Michelle, breaks free at the 40, to the 45, to the 50, trying to get into the open field. Oh, a man jumped on him, and he just dunked him off. He's got to go all the way. Touchdown. That guy jumped on his back, and he just bucked him right off. 
with one year behind him and already a scrapbook of game-changing plays to start his second season. Sony knows he has the potential to be the player everyone else has always believed he was. He is focused on that, but even more so on becoming the person he knows he can be. What I have done this offseason to improve as a player was trying to build my character on the field and off the field, trying to be a leader. A positive voice, someone to keep uh, people motivated, inspirational, keep them going. He didn't always know it, but Sony Michelle was born to play football. It took opportunities for him and for the people he loved that offered hope, that offered more than what a game in and of itself ever could. But he knows now, he knows why. My why is just to be in the best position possible once I'm out of college. And like I said earlier, just to be able to help people that's not able to help me back. Um, I don't wake up every morning thinking about striving for something uh, like striving for like materialistic things or when I go out there I just try to be my best and I know hard work pays off so once I go out there I just put in hard work. Hand off Sony Michelle he hesitates cuts to the right bounces off a man 10 5 touchdown it's zone. The dogs at Nayland Stadium taking on the Vols. Highlights are next. This segment is brought to you by AT&T, a proud sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. AT&T, mobilizing your world. The dogs travel for only their second time this season as they head to Knoxville, Tennessee for another 3.30 kickoff. First play of the game, Nick Chubb goes down with a game-ending injury. Chubb spins down, knocked to, to the turf around the 18-yard line on the far sideline. Nick is injured on the sidelines, out of bounds. The dogs have the depth they need, though, in the backfield, and the team immediately rallies. Dobbs, quick drop, fires over the middle, broken up, incomplete, almost intercepted. Gainus, no, Gainus did, he caught it on the tip. Gainus caught it on the tip on the interception. It's George's ball. They pistol, they give it to Hurd. Oh, the ball's loose! Oh, it's out! Sanders has got the ball, he caught it in the air! No, that's Floyd! Leonard Floyd racing down the middle of the field! Floyd to the 30, can he outrun that last man? 10, 5, touchdown! He got there! Touchdown, Leonard Floyd! Mitchell out wide to the right. We go power, play fake, Lambert wants to throw it to Malcolm, hanging it up far sideline, Malcolm goes up, he breaks it down! Touchdown, I think! Yeah, touchdown in the right corner. Malcolm Mitchell went up and took it away. Lambert going to drop back, wants to throw. Long pass deep to the near side. He's got a man open, and it is caught. Reggie Davis, he made the catch. We send Blazevich in motion, handed off to Michelle. He stops at the backfield, finds a seam, wide open to the 20. Oh, what a move at the 30 to the 40. Breaks another tackle, 50, still upright on the 40, 30. Fights off another man down to the 22-yard line and knocked the ball out of bounds. Wow, what a run. Marshall Morgan to try the 38-yard field goal or the 37-yarder, and this one splits the pipes this time. It's good. After an offensive and a defensive touchdown, a special teams touchdown leads the Bulldogs into halftime with a 24-17 lead. Trevor Daniels kick, and he's got uh, our man backpedaling, Reggie Davis. He fumbled it, picks it up on the bounce, curls around far to the right. Now heads up field to the 40, angles this way to the 50, cuts through a seam to the 40, back the other way. Look at Reggie, he's going to take it all the way. 15, 10, 5, 
Goal line, touchdown! Wow! Reggie Davis gets it done. sideline it's man is breaking away and it's caught at the five and it is a touchdown Reggie Davis with that speed that little extra burst he broke away from the defender and Lambert laid it in beautifully in the far pylon and the dogs are an extra point from tying it the second half proved tough for the dogs they kept fighting but came up just short with a final score of 38 to 31. Pulse game reaction from the players and head coach Mark Rick. Next on Inside Georgia Football with head coach Mark Rick. Inside Georgia Football is presented by Georgia's own credit union, bank, borrow, invest. And brought to you in part by Georgia Lottery. That winning feeling doesn't come if you don't play. Play Georgia's own Jumbo Bucks Lotto with jackpots starting at a million bucks. This segment is brought to you by Hyundai, proud supporter of college football and loyal fans everywhere. I feel for our guys because I know how hard they played and I, uh, I'm proud of their efforts. Um, we don't have an effort issue. Uh, you know, we just got to execute better. You know, I know you hear it all the time, but it's, it's the truth of it. And, um, you know, one of the things we talked about was not, you know, giving any gifts away and all that kind of thing and making them earn everything they get. Didn't quite do that the entire ball game, but um, we got one of those too, so <laughs> I guess it kind of evened out. But bottom line is they made more plays when it counted the most and uh, got to give credit. Well, we've got some other good backs. I mean, Sony stepped in, played well. Uh, you know, Keith Marshall got an opportunity to get in there and play some, and he played well. Um, and, you know, you just got to keep playing ball. It's, everybody knows that. It's just, um, I mean, I don't think everybody just dropped their head and said, oh, no, the game's over by any stretch. But everybody loves Nick Chubb. Um, everybody respects Nick Chubb. I'm sure the Bulldog Nation's heart sank. When you, when you see a guy like that on the sideline like that, I mean, he, he is a true warrior uh, when it comes to playing football, and, and uh, he's – one of the finest people, <clears throat> one of the finest people we have on our team. With any game, there's shifts in momentum, but um, you know we weren't really able to get it back after that. Kind of when they scored right for the half, so um, to my cap off to them, they did a good job. But um, in the end, it comes down to us making plays and not making plays. So we're moving week to week, week by week, and uh, you know we'll get on the planes, go back home, and. Uh, assess everything that happened in the game and we'll move on to Missouri. So, I mean, the only thing you can do, uh, you know, with this kind of, you know, record and this kind of season that we've got going on right now is take everything week by week, put the bad stuff behind you, build off the good stuff and keep rolling. Our offense fought hard. I believe, I think our offense fought hard. You know, there was a good defense um, we played against today. You know, they had a lot of momentum. I think the momentum was what really made it hard for us to get it going. How do you guys try and bounce back from this? Regroup, recover, uh, keep fighting. That's what we have to do. One thing that we've done is we've tackled well, uh, and tonight we did. Uh, um, the bottom line is you got to finish on good players. They got some good skill players on offense. You got to be able to finish. Um, you know, and we gave them a couple of a couple of easy throws. You know, and that's on me. Uh, we, that's one thing that, that we've not been doing. We did it last week and we've done it again this week is give guys easy throws and I got to do a better job getting the guys ready to execute a game plan. The dogs will immediately shift their focus now to their next SEC opponent, the Missouri Tigers. They'll be in Sanford Stadium Saturday night at 730 and the dogs will be ready to compete again.